Welcome to the second episode of Series 37, everyone. This episode, we are welcoming back Tracy Barnett to finish creating our characters. Oh, well, actually, our plays. It's an interesting series, and we go into some really fun places with it. So absolutely check this game out afterwards. But before we get to the episode, let's go ahead and get to our announcements. First up, if you haven't been checking out the A Horror Borealis podcast feed to check out the Losers A Love Story miniseries, absolutely check that out. It's some of my best work in sound design yet, and it is well worth the listen if you're up for listening to a queer retelling of Stephen King's It, with a lot of the bad stuff removed. It does get a bit heavy at times, so listen with care if you do check it out. Next up, have you checked out the One Shot Network Patreon lately? It has some really great content on there for shows like Campaign right now, but uh, we are working our way to getting some more bonus content in there for ourselves as well. Once we figure out a proper cadence, we should be able to have something new for the Patreon every month at least. So I am very excited to get to that point. Giving to the Patreon helps pay for the hosting of this show and all the other shows on the network. Helps keep the network synergy going strong, replaces components like microphones if they happen to break, and it helps James and Mel survive, which is honestly the best thing about it. Uh, it's a very worthy cause, if you ask me. So, if you are able to assist and would like to, head on over to patreon.com slash one shot podcast and check out the fun stuff that we have to offer. Finally, we are still in need of more reviews to read once Amelia and I can record these together. We have links in the show notes to our Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, and Stitcher pages, all which are great places to leave us a review. Doing this for us gives us a lot more visibility to folks looking for great RPG podcasts to listen to, and it really lifts up our spirits as well. So head on over there after the show and let us know what you think. And give us five stars if you think we've earned it. That's all we have for today's announcements. For now, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. episode of Character Creation Cast, Tracy, Amelia, and myself were all creating the dungeon and decided on making a weird underwater ancient coral reef that was created by one of the Krakens in this world. This episode, we're picking up right where we left off. Enjoy. So, question three. What evil took root in your heart? Capitalism. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I wanted to I, be, I can it not please play be a horrible cabal of mermaids? Oh, a mermaid cabal. <laughs> a mermaid cabal. <laughs> please let me have this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I, I like a mermaid cabal. Fantastic. <laughs> and what foul being first heeded the call of your curse? Implying that this is outside of the mermaid cabal, yeah. right? That there's something, some other thing that lives within the dungeon. So, like, maybe the mermaid cabal summoned something. Mm -hmm. mm. Hmm. What would a mermaid cabal summon? That's not a kraken, because the kraken, a kraken, made us. Mm -hmm. Ooh, how about the ever flame? It's a water that it's a fire that burns underwater. Oh. Ooh. Yes. I like that. Absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, so that's the beginning. Uh, <laughs> okay, now, great. Perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that 
that's that's the thing. Uh, so now we use uh, the grid on uh, on the, in the game. It's just below the questions, uh, but it's a slide two for us. So we just get to. Uh, draw some things that represent Ooh. this uh, to us. So in the interest of shared uh, agency, I suggest we each draw sort of one thing, assuming that the entire grid we see in front of us is the desiccated coral reef. OK, right, because we don't we don't necessarily have have like buildings to define and things of that nature. OK, and I'm going to uh, pick uh, this space, this shape right here, and I'm going to draw it over this way, Ooh. and I'm simply going to uh, label it the Temple of the uh, Everflame. Ooh, I like that. There we go. That's my contribution. All right. Hmm. There's a lot of good shapes. Hmm. Yeah, there are the. This is why I like using Google Slides uh, for this kind of thing as opposed to other more tabletop focused platforms mm -hmm. because ease of use and uh, accessible uh, slide functions, yeah. shape functions. See what this one looks like. Whoa, that's, that's kind of trippy. I don't, <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't like that. Oh, hell yes. Let me, can I rotate it? Oh, I think yeah. with a little, ooh, yep, yes. the, the The point at the top. Yeah. Just like uh, that. just grab that and you can spin it however you want to. Cool, 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 cool. Ooh, I can even mm -hmm. do that. Yep, and to add text, just double click on it. Oh, hey, that's fun. Yeah, it'll be a little bit whopper drive because <laughs> of your rotation, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, who who says that mermaids read maps in one plane? I know it's true. This will be um, goodness. What is this? This is this is like a chasm. Of sorts, uh, the uh, chasm of the eternal, the the bottomless chasm um, of perpetual light. Ooh, ooh. Yo, <laughs> there we go. Great, I am I am so here for the bottomless chasm of perpetual light. <laughs> oh man, now I feel like I have a lot to live up to here. This is. I know you're equal to the task. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we say? So we we're created by a kraken, mm -hmm. and the mermaid, mermaid cabal, cabal, desiccated coral, desiccated coral. All right. Um, I want I want the lightning bolt that way. Boop. Um, sent to the back. Bam. Underneath the temple. Oh, nice. If we do that, you know what? All the way underneath the temple. Yeah, like this shape. That's great. I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. And I'm going to take a little a little creative liberty here with your shape, Ryan, and I'm going to light it oh, up. Oh, yeah. There we go. So for the listeners uh, that aren't <laughs> going to be checking this out later, uh, the Temple of the Everflame is a uh, almost a four-walled four uh, room, but with the each of the corners are kind of uh, quarter-circled out. Scalloped. Scalloped, yes. Um, and then I created a giant lightning bolt that went underneath the temple of the Everflame, uh, that is labeled the bottomless chasm of perpetual light. And when we're done with this recording, I can change the uh, link permissions on this so it's view only, and you can put uh, a link to this uh, slideshow in the show notes. Awesome. What's the plural of Kraken? Is it just Krakens? Uh, yeah. Actually, no, it's just Kraken. Yeah. There's no S. Kraken, Kraken. Okay. Kraken. Yeah, there's a there's a herd of kraken. Yeah, I've heard of kraken. <laughs> I've heard of kraken. Sweet a cacophony of kraken. There, and I have created the dark chamber of the kraken. Like that. And I'm taking I'm taking further liberties. Yes. And there you go. Got yeah, a lot text of light that. and darkness uh, yes. motif going on here. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Cool. Uh, so that's that's the beginning. Uh, we have now created the the basic shape of the dungeon and so we move on to our first foray adventurers have heard of of us Ooh. and they are about to begin exploring so foray whispers of your existence the treasures you hold the foul corruption at your core they have incensed the local population those motivated by all manner of desires faith greed bravery daring valor lust, treachery, 
to name a few. They have gathered together and seek to discover the blasphemous secrets at your heart. First, roll your die and add three. So, uh, I have my d10 here. I rolled a four, plus three is seven. So on our uh, adventuring sheet here, I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit and add a new text box and just say number of adventurers is seven. Bizarre. And then uh, I'll delete all those other rows because we only need seven. All right. Then, next, draw a number of tarot cards from a shuffled deck equal to the number in the group. Refer to the adventurer sheet on page 6 for descriptions, the dispositions and occupations of those foolish enough to delve into your invested self. Then, give each person a name to go with their disposition and occupation. Note them down in the space indicated on the sheet. Mm -hmm. So that will do first. Okay. Uh, so there's a, there's a worksheet for this. Um in the actual uh, game. Uh, and uh, Ryan, if you would not mind uh, scribing this information down, sure. I have, uh, I wrote uh, dispositions and uh, uh, and so forth for uh, every single card in a tarot deck. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, seven people. First of all, we have... The Ace of Cups, which is the Prideful Vintner. How do you spell Vintner? V-I-N-T-E-R. Oh, like it sounds. There you go. All right. Uh, next, we have the Two of Cups, which is a stalwart wanderer. All right. Number three is the Moon. The Moon is Despised Practitioner. There we go. Next is the Empress, uh, a haughty ruler. Ooh, there you go. Next is the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is impoverished guide. Next is the world. The world is a contemplative paladin. And last is the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups is an apathetic shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we need to name these people all right and once they are named we will then figure out what actually happens to them in our unhallowed halls mm -hmm. so any names that y'all want to uh to toss in for any of these folks what is a vintner a winemaker okay I, that's what i thought oh that's why little where vintage comes from mm -hmm. huh and where the word vine comes from. Oh. And also Vinland. Hmm. And Thanks, Latin. Vineyard. <laughs> and, and wine. Yes. Hmm. Wow. Uh. This has been your <laughs> pseudo fantasy linguistics uh, lesson for the day. My name is Tracy. Thank you for listening. So we got the prideful Vintner. Um, Vinter. But, but also like underwater, you know? Yeah, yeah. Underwater uh, vent, vent. I mean, but vent but maybe these these aren't like under. Maybe these are scuba divers. You don't know. So. That's true. Or they or they have uh, magics that allow them to to breathe underwater. Mm. Uh, this is the thing. This is the that that sort of joyous world building portion of this. We mm. just get to, and and actually we don't need to worry about that until the until the events start happening. Right, because that will provide the context for how they're venturing through this space. Mm -hmm. um, so it, just in the meantime, uh, I think that our haughty ruler is going to be called uh, Laird Marcellus uh, Kindle Fourth uh, Lamprey. The fifth. Mm. Ooh. And Esquire. I'm going to make that a lot <laughs> smaller. <laughs> uh, uh, pardon me. Marcellus is not a lawyer. <laughs> Haughty. That is so small. You can barely read it. That's amazing. <laughs> that is so uh, tiny. 
Good thing there's a zoom function. I mean, we could technically go to another line. We've got the space. No, that messes up the formatting. And that's that's worse. I I am 100% with you, Amelia. That is why I made it very <laughs> tight. <laughs> um, seeing as my name books are out in the living room, um, that was a poor, poor design decor right, decision. I should, have warned, I should have warned you ahead of time. So that you were going told to me this was going to be people. easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you weren't on the, at least you weren't on the last series where we had to create 22 people yeah that's yeah well the the highest number of adventure of adventurers that can be going into the dungeon is 13 okay simply b- just by design yeah so uh let's see here but you add more every every cycle right technically yeah so uh we're only going to do one cycle today but yeah you and you don't necessarily have to add more because the language specifically says use a shuffled deck implying that you shuffle the tarot deck Mm -hmm. in between each cycle which means that you could end up with the same dispositions right so you if your contemplative paladin shows up again depending on what the event was in the previous uh foray you have to decide if that paladin survived, if it's their ghost, if it's like you have you you get to make decisions simply brought up by the presence of the same disposition that you saw before. Nice. Gonna go with uh, Frederick Dimbleshanks uh, for the contemplative paladin. Wonderful. Uh, I'm going to uh, call our despised practitioner, uh, Matron. Matron Languid. Nice. Um, is there any ones that you want to name specifically, Amelia? Uh, no. <laughs> it, well, and, I'm trying to and, think. And, I'm just in, so bad at names. In the in, that's okay. In the interest of making this easy on you, if you don't want to name any of them, you don't have to. This is a consent-based effort here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I did just open my... I had to go yell at the dog, and so I grabbed my book while I was out okay. there. Um, and I have to say, Theophilus is a great name. Theophilus. That sounds like a pretty prideful, uh, vintnerish yeah. kind of name. Uh, yeah. How about Theophilus Quintus? Nice. Wonderful. And I, I named our stalwart wanderer Fiona Lexington. All right. Great. Uh, I think our impoverished guide just has like a first name. I almost just did an impover- a first name for the apathetic shepherd. So yeah, can we just call the impoverished guide Benji? Yeah, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. Apathetic. And now we have shepherd. an apathetic shepherd. Hmm. I think his name is Johan something. Don't know what the something is. But... Johan Sebastian Flock. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Please. <laughs> I'm typing it right now. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how, to, how you expect I mean, me to not type that, that like, name. That's, I, exactly. I, <laughs> Ryan didn't even bother calling that shot. Like, he didn't Babe Ruth point to center field. He was he just, just like, like, he said it like it was the most normal thing. It was just like, right there. Like, why would you not? <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. Uh, this is this is beautiful. This is perfect. I Everyone love has these to people. stop playing this game now because that's that's it. We've no, no, no! Please, everyone, do not stop playing this game. Go buy a copy of this game and, <laughs> and make your own <laughs> Johann Sebastian Flock. Uh-huh. Yeah, make make the Johann Sebastian of the flock that you want to be in the world. Uh, so, uh, moving back to the foray, we have given everyone names. Uh, now, discover the fates of these pitiful souls. Choose an adventurer. Roll your die and consult the events beginning on page six. This result is the category of the event that occurred. Then roll a second time for the specific event. Next to the entry of the adventurer, note the event and detail it. It is at your discretion to provide as much or as little detail as you like. Repeat this process for each adventurer. So, uh, anyone who's played Fiasco is going to recognize the table uh, setup, right? It's a top-level category. With, with a D10 roll, and then every category has 10 different events. So, okay. Cool. Um, So, I've got the D10 here. I have the book open, so I Ooh, can... Oh, yeah. 
scroll through. Cool. And and if anyone else has, I, I don't want to monopolize the, I the, the choosing have, of this. So if, if anyone has a D10 handy, you're welcome, obviously, to to give some rolls. And all right, I've got my D10 ready. Ryan, hit it. Seven. Seven. That's category is diminishing returns. Go ahead and roll it again. Nine. Nine. The repeating chorus of a never ending song. So this is where the real juice is, right? Because Theophilus Quintus, our prideful vintner, is in this dungeon somewhere. And everything that is implied by all the text prior is that nothing good comes out of being in this dungeon. Mm -hmm. So with that being the context, he hears the never ending chorus of a repeating song. What is it that happens to Theophilus Ventus? Quintus? Um, I think uh, this uh, Vinter um, gets a song stuck in their head perpetually for the rest of their life. The same song, and it never ends. Is it the song that Fantastic. never ends? Uh, I don't want to do that to him. Or <laughs> that is a it, fate too dark even for this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to say it's like um, some some like uh, I don't know wh- wine making song that uh, that they learned as a child uh, from their parents. Who they, oh, it's like a folk song while you're stomping yeah, the grapes. Yeah, 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 to keep the beat. Yeah, but like um, so the next time that they hear that song, it becomes stuck in their head forever. And he's just like driven okay. mad by it. Yeah. Maybe they. I like would it. be. Cool. I can't sleep if I have a song stuck in my yeah. head. <laughs> uh, so uh, then, under the that section, we write uh, some distillation of all of that. Right? If you're if you're writing this on your own, you can put as much or as little detail as you want. You can get extra paper. You can write out the saga of what happened to Theophilus Quintus. Um, for our purposes, uh, I think that um, uh, forever. Plagued by the winemaking song. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> right, because at, at, at its most basic, these are like writing aspects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Which we already know you're very good at. Mm-hmm. That is, as you said last time, your superpower. So. you Yes, I, I said it then. <laughs> uh, you are honoring my statement now. I appreciate you. <laughs> so, uh, Amelia, do you happen to have a D10 ready to go or should um, I roll? You can roll. Please. Okay, fantastic. I can look at the I can look the, at the document though. <laughs> yeah, please do. Uh so tell me what we're going to do with a four for Fiona Lexington. All right. Um Baleful Curses. Fantastic. And a one. A flute that never stops playing. Mm. Does it like constantly play? I mean, like it says never stops playing, but I imagine it like only while you're trying to do something like like if there's like a flute that only plays while you're trying to call your mom on the phone or something Mm -hmm. like (laughs) it's just it's like this inane obnoxious thing but like eventually would just like Mm. make you not like Um, well it's like like a train being right next to your window when you're trying to sleep ryan knows all about this because appleton has nothing but trains Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's very i was just gonna I was just going to say the idea of a flute that only starts firing up when you're trying to go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. It sounds pretty bad. Yes. Oh. Why yeah, but you, like a what? piccolo. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like a really <laughs> annoying flute. But why? It's got to be good otherwise, right? Otherwise, why like would you, why would you nice. hold on to that? I guess. In possession of a piccolo that only plays when they're trying to sleep. Nice. Haha. <laughs> All right, Ryan, a D10 for Matron Languid, right. the despised practitioner. That is a two. Delights from the ruins. Ooh. Eight. A cooling draft of water. Ooh. That says to me that the Temple of the Everflame is dry and parched, but there's like one magical fountain in there, and Matron is like trying to crawl through this just desiccating heat of the Everflame to get to the closest draft of cool water, which is this fountain and not like leaving the temple. Like 
you would want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like that desert mirage of like, Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's Mm -hmm. the wrong direction, I have to go this way. Well, it's it's an interesting uh, thing, though. This is all underwater, right? Mm -hmm. So I would mean like the Everflame is heating the water around it, except for this ever cool water. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which, which is why I think it's horrific. Like, I think Amelia is right. I think it's a mirage. Like, Matrin is is probably just climb, crawling closer to the Everflame itself. Oh. Oh, no. Poor Matrin. Ain't no one going to get out of this happy. Well, Brian. you know what? They're despised, <laughs> so they they can boil, I guess. You've come so far for, since that Headspace episode where Senda kept telling you, no, Ryan, you did yep. something bad. And you said, but like, not that bad. And she said, no, Ryan, the whole point is really bad. I, I've learned to embrace it a bit. I'm proud of you. That's growth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, uh, Amelia, I'm going to roll for Laird Marcellus Kindleforth Lamprey the Fifth. All right. The haughty ruler. Oh. Two also delights from the ruins. Okay. Number two, sharing a feast with your fellows. Oh. In the context of this dungeon. I think that's like something in the dark chamber of the Kraken. Right? Like, I think that there is like, I don't know, the sound of like a joy and a feast and all of that kind of stuff that like calls you to enter. Um, and then you go, you go in and doors close behind you and no one knows cause it's dark. So trapped in the dark chamber of the Kraken. Yeah. Oh boy. Fantastic. I like it. Here I was going to be a little bit nice to them, but that sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're haughty and they're That's a ruler. Right. So yeah, we don't want that. any of that, that. One percent in here. (laughs) (laughs) All right, uh, Benji. Uh, Hit, yeah, hit a roll for Benji there. All right, we're gonna go with five. Five whispers from the shadows. Ooh. Nine. The distant baying of a pack of wolves. (gasps) Oh man. Huh. Okay. Um, are they also spirits called forth by the Mermakeable? I, that, I what's think underwater so. wolves underwater wolves would could easily be the mermaid cabal itself or mm-hmm. um it could be like um the equivalent of uh guard dogs oh uh, for yeah. the dungeon it's sharks. like our sharks, our version yeah. of a cerberus it's like uh an underwater Cerberus? Yeah, but so it's like a shark with several heads. Is it, is, is it a multi, multi-headed multi shark? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like a, like a, uh, oh gosh, I got like a Hydra. Yeah. Maybe. Like a, like a Hydra, yeah. Hydra shark. Underwater. <laughs> they're all Hydras because they're hydrated. The Hydra shark. Um, yeah. And it's, it's not multiple wolves, it's each head is what you're hearing. Okay, so, so it you sounds know how, like, like multiple things. Medusa has yeah. like the snakes for hair, but like what is an octopus version of that? So then it's like it has like do you know what I'm saying? It has octopi I... for hair. <laughs> so not just I don't so, know. so so what, I don't are know we, where are I'm we... going with this? <laughs> how how about a a large a large sort of um pulsating center mass? <laughs> That has stalks coming out from it. At the end of each stalk, it looks like an octopus. So if you just catch a glimpse of the end of one stalk, it just looks like an octopus. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But if you look closely, the octopus at the end of each of its tentacles, there's a mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh. And those mouths are actually what is doing the calling. So if there are technically eight heads, there are 64 mouths. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the call of the octohydra. I like the octohydra. Yeah, it's better than hydropus. <laughs> and then, it, and then, if you sever one of the the heads, then eight more, eight more. come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. the worst. Yeah. The, it's, I I I don't know enough about math, but I think that's a a lot of lot of mariv- lo- <laughs> logarithmic. Yes, that's what the word I'm trying to. I'm very 
proud of myself that I did not swear on this family friendly podcast <laughs> just a second ago. The logarithmic expansion rather than just exponential. Right. Mm-hmm. Someone who does math can check my work, but uh, great. The call of the octahydra. Amelia. Frederick Dimbleshanks. Number six. Fre- Frederico Dimbleshanks. Yes. <laughs> Poor friend. Um, uh, let's see here. I don't have a D10, so. Oh, right. If you want to roll, uh, I, I can. I'm rolling, and you're telling yes. me the thing. That's right. I have to remember how I've set my own procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Seven diminishing returns. Mm. I, wow. I just literally jumped the shark there you were supposed to say that's okay i'm at seven now so i get to say the next part it's one we've had already okay so we have to decide are we going to run with the repeating chorus of a never-ending song again or are we going to re-roll oh let's re-roll yeah i want to show off all the options here wonderful number two okay spending hours opening a locked door to an empty room what if that's hmm. also the dark chamber of the Kraken? Like, what if the dark chamber of the Kraken is like, uh, not naming book, uh, the room of requirement? It's like, so it's it's what it's what you need or what you don't the, need. <laughs> the the twisted version of yes. it. What the mermaids decide you right. need. Right, right. What will what will call to you? Okay. Um, like the thing that will I, get you there most. And ooh. so maybe for this contemplative paladin, it is an empty, quiet place in this horror. Um, ooh. I like it. And I also like just saying trapped in the dark chamber of the Kraken again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. We got to do something with this bottomless chasm, though. We do. Well, let's see what happens with Johann Sebastian Bach, <laughs> Ryan. Uh, a six. Oh, still so good. Torrents of Sorrow. Mm. Five. Leaping into a pit full of spiked There weeds. you go. There it well, is. That, that, sounds like, that sounds like a chasm to me. It does. It sounds like a chasm full of spikes all the way down. Yeah. I want to say, so, yeah, like... Uh, yeah. Like the pit is luminous, um, and it it kind of uh, kind of lures you in, mm-hmm. kind of like mm-hmm. an anglerfish. Mm. Uh, the pit is is actually sentient, and this is how it feeds. Oh, it's like the sarlacc. Yeah, I was it's, say. Like a, it's like a, it's like a giant sarlacc. Yeah. Oh, it's an anglerfish sarlacc pit. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that sounds you about know, right. Like those. Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't seen an anglerfish yeah, I mean, sarlacc like, in their day? <laughs> uh, so lured into, yeah, the bottomless chasm of perpetual life. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, so this is what has happened to the people who dared venture into uh, the the coral, the desiccated coral reef. This place sounds these like are, a these, nightmare. Yeah, I think that's uh-huh. the point. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So, following that, we've determined all of their fates. Now, Ryan, I'm going to give you the honor uh, of this. Ooh. Last, roll your die a final time. Three. Place this digit in the tens place and put a zero in the ones place. Thirty. This is the percentage of the original party that survived their excursion to your doomed (laughs) corridors. Decide as you will who lives and who dies. If there are any fractions, that person lived, but is less some of their original limbs. Oof. (laughs) So, uh, 2.7. 2.1. Okay, fantastic. So two people. Two people and point one. Two (laughs) people. Yeah, two two people do not make it out. No, this is and, this is two people do make it out, right? Uh oh wait, did I read that backwards? Um oh right. Yeah. So that, so a lower percentage means more people are goners. Yeah, survived. Yes. So uh, so it's so, very interesting so, because it can never it can never be um 0% are all gone. Somebody has to at least be partially uh returned. 
Yes, because otherwise, how does your legend grow? Oh, I love that. That's smart. So, like, I think the first two on our list are the ones that seem like they make it out because they get these songs stuck in their head in this instrument, right? Yeah, that that would make the most sense that those two make it out. Um, gosh, that that mirage is going to boil that that person. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's so that's not good. I mean, I think Benji maybe would you know like you fight the octahydra you could probably win but you're gonna be less some of your limbs. yeah that dark chamber of the kraken seems like a just a a forever trap like it gets you in there and then it keeps you there there's no way out yeah uh and that bottomless chasm of perpetual light uh that thing is hungry and that's not yeah. gonna let you go and it's bottomless so yeah i wonder if theophilus and fiona make it out and they tried to stop Motrin from crawling t- right into the Everflame and like just got a boot mm. Mm. and and they're bringing back all they can of their companion. Yeah. Oh, no. Like at least you have something <laughs> to bury. Yeah. Mm. Does that uh, does that work for you? Yeah, I'd be OK with that. Yeah, because that that point one is saying very little of them makes it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Uh, So I'm just going to black out on our view of all of this. Almost everyone, except for the (laughs) M.O. of of Matran language. So that is our first foray. That is what happens when adventurers uh, enter this place. Next, Fallow. They are gone, carrying with them the scars and signs of their time in your deceitful chambers. Even death does not erase the marks left upon them. Answer the questions on this page, then redefine your boundaries. Based on your answers to the questions, add new rooms, hallways, or even levels. Should your expansive blasphemies need additional space, utilize the grids from the fallow, from additional Fallow pages. Mm. So, first question. What bright thing was left by the adventurers? Hmm. Um, wasn't one of them a ruler? Wasn't that Laird? What's mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Uh, did he leave a crown, maybe? Oh, the, the crown of Laird Marcell- Marcellus Kindleforth Lamprey the Fifth? Yeah. Well, we blacked out the name, Wonderful. so now I can't see it. <laughs> well, if you highlight yeah. it, you can. That's the only reason I... <laughs> there we go. The crown of Laird Marcellus Kindleforth mm. Lamprey V was left. How have in you the turned its brightness into corrupting shadow? Uh huh. Um, gosh, it's got to be it's it's got to be cursed right now. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. which how did how did Kindleforth Mar- Marcellus? Um, Marcellus Kindleforth. How did he go? Was trapped in the dark chamber of the Kraken. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, so trapped in the dark chamber of the Kraken. I think um, it literally turns everything to shadow. Like you put the crown on and everything is dark. Like you can't, like everything is covered in shadow now. Like whatever room you are in is dark. Nice. Yeah. So it is, it's now the baleful crown of shadow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. You want to read the next question, Amelia? Sure. Well, maybe if I can put my glasses on here. (laughs) In the years since the adventurers, who or what has taken up residence inside of your desperate passages? Do we get to make another monster? Uh I think so. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, gosh, what would be horrifying? Mm hmm. Oh, um, those, uh, those weird, uh, they're almost jellyfish things. Uh, okay, so you, do you know those uh, creatures that like link together in a chain of themselves and just creates this like lawn chain and then some of them are responsible for attacking, some of them are responsible for feeding, but everything kind of disperses amongst the chain? So, So it's like an aquatic human centipede with like the ability to, to eat and attack? Effectively, any part of it is able to eat, any part of it is able to attack, any part of it is able to reproduce, but not at the same time. Like, they they join together as a communal uh, that physically connects with one another, 
and uh, they're able to do those three things uh, for the benefit of the the whole, but uh, they're not able to do them, you know, at the same time uh, individually. Amazing. Um, and I want to say that they're they're bigger than you know, uh, shrimp sized. Right. Right. Oh wow, that's great. Um, how to put that into <laughs> <laughs> something actionable on this? Since I don't know the name of 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 the being. Oh, that's it is. Um, gosh, if I just looked at Descent into Midnight's Twitter feed, I'm sure I would find it somewhere in there. <laughs> um, because yeah, it was uh the siphonophore. Okay, I was gonna okay. say that's like I was it's, looking it's at them. It's on... like a siphonophore species. Yeah. A, a, a colony of massive si- siphonophore. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's so good. And that would be just horrifying. And they're like super poisonous. Yeah, toxic siphonophore. Yeah. Massive, toxic. Beautiful. Mm. Uh, wonderful. What did the new resident add to your structure? And what price did you extract from them? Oh, um, community. Okay. It added community. And um, what, what, what price did we extract from this community of toxic uh, siphonophores? They're stuck here with us now. Oh, yeah. They can't leave. But they must stay forever. Yeah. Wonderful. You know, they could set up a school system and um, have a have a nice little park uh, next to the chasm, but uh, mm-hmm. you can't leave. Yeah, for the Hotel California of Dungeons. <laughs> uh, and now, on that note, <laughs> uh, we get to add uh, something to the map. We get to redefine our boundaries. Ooh, yeah. So, so what new? Uh, space or spaces has been added. Um, I want to add a uh, siphonophore village. Great. That's a series of interconnected houses that have no walls between them. I was picturing it as oh. like a spider web that you have to walk through. I mean, that could work too. <laughs> I just like this. I just like the silliness of uh, like they can connect through all these houses. So like they're always connected with one another through this chain of houses, but like mm-hmm. they still have front doors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You draw that. that then. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear listeners. Ryan is just piling a bunch of circles on top of oh, each that's, other. That's, that's Tracy. That's not me. Oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just being your your helpful guest and making a massive ugly siphonophore village. There you go. I'll put some arrows on there too. Oh, oh okay. Bad. So that you know that they they all that connect. They cycle. Yeah. Okay. That, <laughs> that makes sense. I'll put this. Makes sense to me. It needs to be a good color though, I think. Um a good transparent siphonophore <laughs> color. There you go. Yeah. Oh, we've got okay. some layering going on. <laughs> we do. We've got circles on multiple layers. We've got the we've got the arrow looping all around. Uh, I think uh, we, we never need to colored make sure. the temple of the Everflame. Is it supposed to be that color? Or should it be? Uh, that's the default color. You can you can okay. make it whatever color you would like. I think maybe it needs to be. Gosh. Yeah. There we go. And I I made the siphonophore village. I labeled that. So there. wonderful. Um, my friends, that is the that's a round of you are the dungeon. That's, Ooh, oh, that that's was lovely. Dark. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like I said, antagonistic. Uh, antagonistic is definitely the word. I loved yeah. it. And, yeah. And you can I mean, obviously, if you're if you're playing on your own, you, you move at whatever pace you want mm-hmm. to. And, and you can answer the questions at your leisure and in much more detail. And we, we did pretty decent detail, but you could write down a lot more than we did. And you can you just keep you just keep going. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you just make the dungeon larger and you let as much time between uh, four race seasons pass as you as you want to. Mm-hmm. I like this. Yeah. And, and and I like that it can be collaborative, but I I'm sure we're going to talk about that in the discussion portion. Mm-hmm. We will. We definitely yeah. will. 
Awesome. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for joining us for You Are the Dungeon. Uh, Do you want to remind people where they can find you? Yes, definitely. You can find me online anywhere at the other Tracy. That is all one thing, and it's T R A C Y. That's my Twitter. It's my itch page. It's my website. It's all of the things that are that are me. You can find me there. Mm. It's a very useful handle because every time I talk to my wife about Tracy said this, I have to say, "Oh, the other Tracy." <laughs> And and she immediately knows who I'm talking about. Yep. And every single Tracy that I know is mad that I got that handle. (laughs) It makes me very happy. It's so good. Uh, Well, thank you for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. This game that Tracy made is something special for sure. Uh, It it's really cool how many different ways this dungeon can be created and it's really amazing how it all comes together in the end i'd really love to play a few more rounds of this and Amelia and i may actually end up doing that for some bonus content sometime soon uh we'll definitely keep you posted whenever that ends up happening uh but before we head out i just wanted to give a couple calls to action for today If you are able to and aren't already, consider giving to the One Shot Podcast Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. We have a lot of amazing rewards for different tiers and your contributions would help out the network tremendously. Also, check out Losers A Love Story and this week's episode of The Broadswords and you'll be able to hear some of the work I've been doing lately. Now that I am the dialogue editor for the Broadswords and the sound designer for A Horror Borealis, along with this show, technically, I think I'm currently editing one out of every six shows on the network. Maybe one out of every five? I don't know. And that's wild. Finally, check out our links to the various platforms that you can review our show on. Every five-star review really helps others find the show and really helps us in the rankings. Also, we'd love to see more people discussing the show online. Recommend us to folks looking for non-AP RPG podcasts. Let us know what your favorite series has been so far. Hit us up on Twitter at CreationCast and let us know your thoughts. We already have a lot of game recommendations though, so we really don't need many more of those anytime soon. Uh, But we do still love hearing from all of you. That's all we have for today. For now, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you have an excellent rest of your week. Take care, stay safe, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, 
And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role playing games. Except the games are terrible and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which silver hawk was the best. It was Hot Wing, don't even add us. Find their shows at systemmasterypodcast.com or oneshotpodcast.com. Finally.